Welcome back. Another episode of Tanner Takes. These guys need no introduction. <laughs> Logan, Fred, you know. Hey, fellas, what's up, man? We back. Hey, we're, we're enjoying back. it, man. Enjoying it. I want to hear these takes you got today, guys. Here they get kind of personal. <laughs> well, I, well, I got them. I got them, man. And, and I'm looking forward to your emojis because you always bring that heat, that yeah. yoga flame. Yeah. And, and and Logan is always politically correct. <laughs> he, he's he's, he's, he's a politician. Logan. Continue yeah. to get on yeah. Yeah. you know. But here we are. He a hater. I'm going to throw them at you guys, man. So let me know what you feel. Yeah. Fellas, first take. Yep. Favorite primetime game to play in. Ooh. Now, here's the list. Thursday night football. Ugh. Sunday night football, mm. Monday night football, Monday. or Thanksgiving. Ooh, I'm going to say one. I have two, two okay. favorites. Yeah. My favorite, I'm going to give both of my favorites, and I'm going to tell you why. My first favorite is Thursday night football, and my second one would be Thanksgiving. Ooh, Thursday, Thursday night football. Are you like the only football yeah. player in the last 30 years? Because like first of all, I care less about a primetime game. When I'm on, when I'm on, I'm, it's prime time. Yeah, I'm wanting to you. do something prime time, whether everybody watching or it's just a few people watching. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't see the the magnitude of because everybody's watching. I play better. I'm yeah. just one of those guys. I want to get my game over with, take my home and go have a good time. <laughs> yeah. you so Thursday, week. so yeah. Thursday, I'm looking forward to getting that game over with. <laughs> long and have a long weekend. <laughs> I knew y'all was gonna feel the drill, right? Yeah. And Thanksgiving, that's one game that I feel like as a child. From the from the, from my early years of playing football, part one of little league, we always played on Thanksgiving weekend. I found it it was just something that I loved to do. You know, everybody else home getting fat on turkey. Yeah, I'm playing football. We had three games that weekend, and it's always a championship game into that Saturday. So when I got a chance to play in the league, I was dying to play that Thanksgiving game. When I finally got a chance to play it. You know, lo and behold, it was against the Cowboys, yep. and my family was there. I told y'all how yep. special be playing in Dallas was because mm-hmm. my family was there. The people that yep. raised me in the household, my uncle and his kids, they was right there watching. And so it was only right to put on a show for them. So that's why those two games stick out to me, and they're my favorite. I know someone going to want Sunday night and Monday night. I feel like Sunday yeah. night, yeah. you're waiting all day, you're seeing everybody else play. Yeah. And Monday night, you waiting a whole week to play football. Man, yeah. I can't wait that long. Yeah. I'm ready to play now. Hey, I, I, got, I got a question. I got a question with Thursday okay. night take, Tanner. Because like, as much as you like the extra time off, yeah. you got to yeah. start earlier in the week, and your body is still banged man, up. I was yeah. different, man. I had people there to fix all that. I'm uh, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have I that. Get, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. cheat. Yeah, we cheat. Know, you're not paying for Mel. Hey. Nothing else. I had my guy Mel sitting at my house ready. When yeah. we got that game on Sunday, we you're know the game is on Thursday. He already in my basement. Yeah. He ready. Come on, tell yeah. I got to I got to tune you up. Yeah. And by time Tuesday, I'm ready to go for the I'm ready, ready to go. play. Yeah. Yeah. It's Thursday. It's it's Thanksgiving for me. Okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving say. Because Mississippi State Ole Miss, we play on Thanksgiving okay. every year. Yeah. But it also started in the Turkey Bowl when we won getting paid for it. So, yeah. I remember working up the getting the hunger worked up and then one Turkey Bowl I did like break my daddy's leg. You, you did, yep. You brought that <laughs> so, up before, yeah. So then I <laughs> came to. How did you do that? Like, was it a tackle? Did you? It was a tackle. So he, he jumped to catch the ball, and I knew I had. You I, undercut your dad you in a turkey ball. You done tore your daddy hamstring and broke his leg. Bro. I said, "This is this is time if you ever go get him. <laughs> this do is now. time right now." So then I went to uh, Mississippi State to play Ole Miss every Thanksgiving, and then when I got here, we played the Cowboys yeah. Thanksgiving. So it always became yeah. that special game for me. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say thir- uh, Thanksgiving also because like even in high school football, like mm-hmm. if you were playing on Thanksgiving, yeah, Thanksgiving. Or practicing on Thanksgiving, right time. you were doing the right thing. And so to get good. that opportunity in the NFL was great. And but I think Monday night's got to be the best game of the week. Yeah, because, I mean that's what everybody would think because you know? that's the one everyone's watching. Yeah, and so that's what I would say. But screw yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. like Monday night because it's short in your week. It takes it's forever your too, week. man. They say, man, it's nice Look, to be on that. that, that Monday one night game. always gave us a longer week of preparation. I yeah. hated that, it is man. True. I, I like to get it on, get it now. That's why I was one of those guys that I always told you, like I didn't have to prepare as much. Like you routine, short, shorter yeah. weeks. Yeah. I'm, I'm prepared. I yeah. got my stuff down to a science. I'm ready to go. Good job, though, fellas. Next take. Favorite 4th of July tradition? Right. I shared this a little bit with y'all on the podcast. Yeah. I believe my tradition kind of stemmed down from my aunts having her 4th of July parties every year. You know, her daughter was a uh, 5th of July baby, so she yeah. always sped it up a day early and had her big birthday celebration on nice. the 4th of July. So when I got some money, I was, it was only right for me to <laughs> give my family the same kind of, you know, yeah. you know, hey, I had it when, you know, when we was coming up, now I got it. So I love to have a gathering, whether it's a barbecue, pool party, but at the end of all that, after eating good, the kids got to have a nice night and we send them home with fireworks. We, we light up the block and get those kids that, that memory that they can Always remember, and I just shared with y'all, my son heard him a a couple of years ago, and he was like, this is a boring 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> I 
because we didn't have fireworks, and I felt like I got too old to be buying fireworks. So last year, I spent a couple of dollars to get him some fireworks just to yeah. make sure he didn't make me feel bad. But um, that's my, I mean, I'm my gonna, take on that. I'm like a little emotional. That's no, like, that's what I say. It's a fire, but it heart. pulled on my heart. Yeah, because it's like it's, it's this memory. Like you can almost <laughs> you, you smell the smells, you hear the sounds, yeah. Yeah. memories of your whole family. That's great, man. That's yeah. awesome. That's dope. Well, for mine, it was we we have no one a, cares about you. We have man. a fireworks this war. Is <laughs> Like, we like you did not. No, we have like a fireworks war with the Roman Catholics. My 18, my grandma yeah, running, everybody knocking. We shooting at everybody right here. So, I can see y'all in Mississippi doing that, too. Oh, listen, then we wonder why everybody got burnt marks at the end of the day. They always say it's the most tragedies happening in New Orleans and Mississippi doing 4 Yeah, that's no, why. You was one that's of That's why. <laughs> All right, fellas, next take. <laughs> All right, fellas. I'm going to give out some superlatives from my former teammates. All right. Okay. You know, now we have a list of superlatives, and I'm going to start off like this. The first superlative Shoot will go to the funniest teammate. <laughs> ah, I hate to have this to start it off. So I'm going to talk to the audience a little bit first. Yeah. This guy here, he <laughs> already <laughs> tooting his own Keep horn. Together. Now, I shared with Logan, <laughs> I was a part of a Playboy All-American team back in the day. Fred know about this. Back in the day, you got a picture in the Playboy magazine where yeah. they get all the best of college. the best college yep. guys, mm -hmm. and they come to Arizona, and we take these pictures, have a good time. We get an introduction into what it's going to be like to be pros one day. Because, yeah. you know, you got people there that's trying to get at you, yeah. trying to show you, hey, man, you come be with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going you know, I'm yeah. I'm to be your guy next year to get you in the league. And I met this kid named Fred Smoot. <laughs> and when I tell you, yeah, most of you guys know me, man. I'm... I'm I can't say I'm soft-spoken. I'm just selective with who I go to open up a conversation with. But he saw his way out to me. And he gonna <laughs> tell me I got an old soul because I wasn't wrapping my mouth. But man, I went home, went back to school, and everybody asked me how was my trip. And I say, bro, it's the dude I saw. He must see TV. <laughs> Fred Smoot. Now, we knew about Fred Smoot because he was pretty that, you know, he was pretty good in college as a cornerback. Yeah. But he backed it all up, man. Yeah. The, the, the mess he talked. That day, I was looking forward to watching him play. And man, I watched him play a senior year, and you know, he ain't let me down. But man, funniest dude, man. I mean, it's one thing to meet somebody and he's funny, but then to be to, to be able to share a locker room with Fred, man, and hear the stuff day in and day night. Look, one, I had to get this story, man. We getting ready for a game, and Fred goes to the quarterback, pulled his pants down, and said, <laughs> Now, how can we win without Fritz Lee win? <laughs> oh my God! Jim Duckett draw. Oh my God! Nah, we can't follow him. <laughs> oh God! What are you said, doing? He said we cannot win with this guy win. Hexaw Jim Duckett draw. We cannot did follow he, him. Did he and, throw like ten interceptions? And, and he made the guy leave his draws at the stadium where he yeah, lost that. He so. did leave him. He left him in Tampa in the Buccaneers uh, so, locker man, room. That's why Fred get the nod so, to my funniest teammate. I really, I really wanted to use this emoji because I really like anytime we hype Fred up, it just goes. To to his head it just makes everything working here worse but he is one of the yeah. funniest, funniest dudes alive, i've ever been around and yeah. so as much as however annoying you are you are funny and it's good to work with you and i'm sure you're a great teammate no so. doubt yeah no doubt. i wish you grow hair too <laughs> all right next one <laughs> my next superlative would be the teammate that had the highest football iq Ooh, that's a good one now i didn't have to think hard watch the dude this guy from college Playing the college game, we just went up. I just scored a touchdown to bring us back, playing against Penn State. And this particular defensive back, he saw something that he saw earlier that week. And he checked, told everybody, mm -mm, do this. So whatever he checked to, it put one of our cornerbacks, Mike Rump, in a man-to-man. -man. But mm -hmm. he's in man-to-man -man with Choppy Fields, one of the better Field, wide yep. receivers. Yep. Choppy went deep on us, caught the, scored the touchdown, beat us, and that safety was Ed Reed yeah. uh -huh. that, that made that check. The coaches got on him. They got him so bad, they biffed him the next week. Ed Reed was so smart. He wasn't wrong with what he saw. Rump just had to play better. Yep. Yeah. The next week, they set him out. I don't know how long it was, a quarter, probably a couple of series. But the first play he got back in there, pick six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That dude there, to me, will yes. always be remembered as one of the highest football IQs. I feel like from watching him in college, we came in together being sweet mates, to see him in the pros, now he's wearing that yellow jacket. There's no doubt why he played the way he played, because he was smarter than everybody on the field. Ed Reed. 
Ed Reed. I second that motion, my brother. He's the king of getting that football mm -hmm. back. Yeah. And he didn't do it with just how fast I am, how quick I am. He literally was the enemy of every quarterback yeah. Yeah. in every offense. It's Ed Reed. Do I remember, you remember Kyle talking about him and how like yeah. he had Ed Reed pajamas and all mm -hmm. this stuff, and he was one of the funnest players to watch. Yeah. This this is a horse, obviously. I know that. Yeah. But I, we, I'm only using this because we don't have a goat emoji. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I would like. That's what Stallion. I prefer. So, Anna, if we can get goats next time, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're a paid man and Man, that's the one guy he's watching, and he said yeah. he, Ed Reed's sucking him into throwing a pick yeah, yeah. still. After, yeah. he, after he read him and said, yeah. okay, every time he does this, yeah. I'm yes. gonna throw back side. And Ed showed him just so he can throw it and yeah. you know, super run and get. He pick. had a PhD in football. Yeah. You're right <laughs> about that. All right, next one. My toughest teammate. Now, I got a few names I could put up there, but I'm, I'm gonna be short on this one. Y'all already know his name, Sean Taylor. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. Sean right. Taylor ready to fight with your mama, your daddy, oh, your, your uncle, your cousin. everybody. He won't smoke before the bus ride. <laughs> he won't smoke after he get off the bus ride. Yes. Hell, he won't smoke with your coach if your coach got something negative yeah, to say yeah, about him. Yeah. Man, look, I ain't never seen a guy like him. And then after he do all that, he gonna come and sit down and talk about T-Pain, how good of an artist he yeah, is yeah. as a rapper. And that's what I couldn't understand about my boy, because I'm yeah. like, for you to go out there and play the way you play between those lines yes. and get on here to talk about the conversations we had on the plane rides yeah. back, I just, I cherish it, man. I, I, yeah. I honestly miss it now because I just knew who the guy was, who what his heart was like, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? But he played that game tougher than anybody I ever played with, Sean T. Hey, listen, uh, four quarters of hell yeah. to anybody that wants it. And he right. He would show up and never smile during the game. Mm -hmm. After the game, he, he just, just giggling, he, like, but Coolest dude, I man. promise you, like, and I've watched him just shove people out there, like, I've watched him just do, TJ Houston was out, ran in our locker room, yeah. so I'm trying, trying to yeah. get out there, I'm like, his intimidation factor, he meant everything he yeah. said, like, he was one of those players, if he say it, he means it. And yeah. just because he was cool afterwards, don't mean he still ain't want smoke. <laughs> no, he won't smoke. <laughs> he will come to you like, come on, bro, I was just playing, but yeah. he really but want me to be really on that. It, man. I, I'm down for that, so yeah, yeah. S Dot, man, oh, man. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why that's why we miss him so much, yeah, because yeah, yeah. he was just Reb Reed. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. My next one would be my savviest teammate. Now this guy gotta go back to college. But we all saw him play on the professional level too. Edrian James. Ooh, he James. Huh? Edrian James yeah. had, man, look, he just had a way about himself. It yeah. was like, I never said I saw a guy that could write something down and just knew how to get to the, that destination. Like when we play a sport that is not always dictated, our, we can't dictate it. It's not always in our hands mm -hmm. to go out there and have what we want. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? We need the offensive linemen, especially yeah. offensively. Mm -hmm. We need the offensive linemen. We need that quarterback. EJ needs to break it down. He knew, and I could easily put him up there with football IQ too. He knew how to get to his destination by writing it down. And he would tell you, Tanner, all I need to do this. I need to do this. See, what happened was, you know, when coach tell me to come out now, I know I got five more plays in me because I want to lease, and them five plays get 40 yards. If I yeah. can get four, I'm like, how you going to get 40 yards in them five plays? Easy, I might break one for 10. I might break one for 12. Like, he had it all broken down and written down on a piece of paper. And when it was all said and done, man, he had what he was trying to get. That guy there, my savvy as a team. And I had a lot of them. I had a lot of guys that just knew how to do things, knew where they was going, how to get there, knew everything about what was in front of them, but EJ stood out. This one right here, I have a slew of guys. Gave me the most knowledge, and we call it game. Yeah. You know, before I became a pro, pro's pro, uh -huh. it took me about four or five years. And I think I didn't become a pro's pro until I got here in Washington. But my first four years in New York, man, I had Wayne Krebet, Marvin Jones, mm -hmm. um, Mo Lewis, uh, mm -hmm. Matthew Hatchett, Lavernius Cole, yep. and last but not least, Curtis Conway. All those guys played a big role in the development of Santana Moss. Mm -hmm. I promise you. I mean, where it was from, the, you know, uh, Curtis, Curtis Martin used to talk, yeah. talk to me about getting people to work on my body. Yeah. Wayne Gabbett used to tell me about, hey, when to pick it up, when to slow it down, you know, how to be fast in and out, how to save some of your legs. Poor, um, uh, uh, Coles taught me when I first got there, he took me on his wing like, hey, I'm going to show you how to just, you know, blend in, how to get into this thing and become, you know, now transition from being a college guy. Um, I think the other guys, Curtis Conway was was very integral too because he was one of those guys that had already done it done at it. a high yeah. level. And now he was over, he was in them, them later years. He yeah. just showed me how to keep it going. So I was always think back when I was here as an older guy, damn, I remember seeing Wayne and Curtis in their, their older years. So I took a lot from all those guys. And more than anything, 
Marvin Jones being a family guy, just teaching me about my family, how to, you know, how to be able to juggle both of them, you know, when it comes to what we have now, this new found wealth. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mo Lewis, more than anything, just kept me motivated. He yeah, always sure. say, so they say. Yeah. He didn't, he, he wanted, he, he, I don't know if he just wanted to piss me off, but he didn't believe. <laughs> he said, yeah, they say you fast, but yeah. I ain't seen it yet. <laughs> so I was just motivated by yeah. him being yeah. there. But all those guys gave me the game, gave me the knowledge so I could come here to be the guy who I was. Mm. Especially that kind of foundational group, right? The guys you're first with kind of. The, the first the first impression you get. Like yeah. my first guys was Darryl Green, Deion sure. Sanders, and Champ Bailey. So yeah. I had like I was blown away by my guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hey, as always, man, I love it. Appreciate you guys. See you next week.